All right, we're going to start this uh, chassis table build. Here's the rendering of it, and some measurements, and then some uh, wire diagrams, 12 feet by 4 feet on the outside edges. Um, decided to push in these end pieces. Uh, I saw a couple chassis tables that had them all the way on the ends, like the Eastwood table, um, and then some other ones that had it uh, pushed in considerably farther than this, uh, maybe twice as far. This is one, uh, or sorry, eight, eight inches in. Uh, I think I've seen it 12 or maybe even more than that uh, inwards. Um, the JD squared uh, Dr. Jig, it's kind of like this where the arms stick out, um, probably to give more clearance to be working on uh, front or rear suspension. Um, yeah, the other thing is uh, one of the wheels to be more uh, centered here, just like the uh, Eastwood. And then I wanted squares for this, for these areas here, in case I want to uh, um, put in some flanges and then be able to lay down a piece of square plate. Um, I guess it didn't have to be square, but uh, that's just the way I wanted it. So, if you want a different one, you can uh, make your own measurements. This is mine. Uh, the width here is not quite as wide as some and not as narrow as others. Uh, seemed like a good um, a good measurement for the uh, inside track so that um, I'm not building a dragster so the wheels uh, or the, the inside of the tire should not be hitting this. So I'll at least have this much width in between the tires in the back. And if not, I'll probably have these up off of uh, like a false ground anyway. So, got the metal delivered yesterday. Uh, they had a nice big bandsaw to cut these flush uh, faster than I could and more accurate than I I could with the, the tools that I have. This is not going to fit in my my Evo uh, 380 uh, saw, um, dry saw that I got. So, um, and I wouldn't trust the Harbor Freight bandsaw with with cuts that I think are critical for this. So I just had them do it. Uh, that worked out good. Worked out well, rather. Here's the 12 foot I-beam lengths. Or this is actually H-beam, so it doesn't have that taper. Um, this is all from the same pieces. I got two pieces of this that were 20 feet long. And I cut them down to, uh, uh, for each piece, cut it down to a 12. Um, and it leaves about um, um, about eight feet left because it's a little bit higher than that. And then uh, 40 inch, 40 inch, and then the remainder of uh, 16 inch. So, and that makes up one stick. Did that twice. Um, and here's what we have. So, these will be the uh, lateral pieces across. Um, this uh, uh, should be a quarter inch wall. Uh, four, Two by four box. This will be the. Uh, I'll cut these down. Uh, these will fit in the Evo, um, and those will be the legs. Um, actually, these are. This is thinner. I got one thick piece here. Yeah, that's what I got. Because these this is like hella ex expensive. So I'm going to use this uh, thick ball here for the vertical legs. Um, this was actually to cut up into. Uh, some widths, maybe five or six feet uh, wide, and these will be used to uh, position the car off of the jig in a in a lateral way. And these will be tacked onto the the top of the uh, the plates, um, and then the car will be sat down on top of that, and um, maybe even bolted. I'm not sure, but uh, it'll be fastened to the jig so it can't move around, and I can get accurate measurements uh, even if the table's moved or bumped. Um, or I have to, if I have to pull up the adjustable legs and then uh, wheel it around, uh, I, I can be sure it's not going to move. Especially with uh, test fitting the actual engine and uh, rear structure, uh, that, that can be kind of heavy. So I uh, want to make sure that the, the car stays in place so I get accurate measurements. Uh, this beam here is a the H beam. It's called 8 by 13. It's uh, 13 pounds per foot. Uh, and the measurements are about four inches by eight inches, and that's um, 
often when you when you order these uh, uh, the, the the flange uh, width and then they the height um, they're not usually uh, roundish numbers but these are like really close so it's like 7.99 inches uh, tall and, and like I think it actually said uh, four inches wide but close enough for what we want um, Clark welding was the uh, supplier for me uh, they got it from their distributor and cut it down and delivered it for me so uh, shout out to Steve um, great guy really friendly uh, worked with me um, sent me a quote for building it um, decided I want to try and tackle it myself so here we go all right so uh, it's kind of thinking about which way I want to stick this together uh, I was thinking MIG um, then uh, with quarter inch um, I thought I'd try uh, stick welding uh, so I don't have to get all of the mill scale off and um, uh, the little bit of dirtiness won't be won't matter as much and I want really good penetration without having to sit there all day um, so I had to kind of refresh myself I haven't done uh, any stick welding in maybe a dozen years and even when I did it um, I wasn't that great at it hold on there we go some uh, paperweights up here all right so things I had to uh, um, brush up on YouTube on in the forums were uh, you know what's the correct stick to use uh, and then I get to check my inventory to see if I have it uh, the correct correct polarity to use for that and the amperage to use for uh, for the thickness I'm using um, other things on the checklist I need to uh, uh, this is not quite in order, this is the order of consciousness here. So uh, check the layout squareness, um, kind of the order of the way I'm going to weld it together. It's going to be very similar to the Eastwood um, uh, tutorial video. I, I, that was a great inspiration to build my own versus um, uh, buying a big one. Um, shims, I should have brought down some wood shims, but I'll find some, some thin metal uh, uh, plates around here, and that's going to use it. I'm going to use that to, uh, like in the Eastwood video, to uh, uh, make sure all the the weld uh, the pieces are flat before I uh, weld them together. Uh, researched uh, any issues with tack welding with stick. Um, a lot of people just use the same thing, or if they're going to use 7018, they will do a tack with uh, the 6010 or 6011, um, I think it's a higher penetration, so it's uh, uh, there's going to be less to weld back over top of. Uh, it is a little bit more brittle from what I've read, but uh, 6010 or 6011, and I think uh, people use the same amperage. Okay, um, let's see here. After I tack the welds, measure it again, um, make sure to be paying attention to my drag angle and speed of the weld. Um, I might find an old scrap piece here and, and just do uh, a few runs just to make sure I have it down. Um, practice how I'm going to brace myself, uh, brace my arm so that I can feed the wire in. Uh, i got to keep the, the tip of the wire or the tip of the rod um, in the weld puddle. Uh, so I don't want to have it too far out and I think that's something I did you know a dozen years ago so the last time I did stick. Uh, I have my wire cut brush handy. Uh, throw that on a angle grinder. Um, really, uh, if I have to do a second pass, uh, which I probably will, um, I want to make sure all that slag is out of there. Uh, be able to scrape the tips, especially on the 7018. Uh, one or two. I can probably just do it on the on the ground here. Um, I like that better than I think than than trying to flick the uh, molten metal out of the tip of the rod. Um, it seems the 7018 uh, and especially I, th I think also the 6013 um, when you end your arc and, and pull the stick away um, uh, I guess either some slag or, or something forms on the end of the tip and then it's really hard to restart so um, people either flick it out at the end and then the molten uh, rod will come off the, the molten part of the rod will, will fling out on the whoever's next to you and then uh, you'll be left with a kind of like a, a cylinder of flux that you can just chip off and then have a nice uh, clean metal piece to restart with or people just rub the 
rub the tip uh, on something abrasive that's not metal um, to uh, uh, get a clean surface to start the weld again. Uh, let's see here. Uh, scratch starts. Something I never knew about that uh, people care about is when you do a scratch start, you scratch start kind of ahead of where you're going to weld. You go backwards to the last place you need to start welding and then you weld back over top. Uh, so that way you, you effectively hide where the scratch start was. Uh, people talk about stress risers and stuff. Um, it's not going to be that critical for me, uh, but it's good practice. So I'll try that. should hide the scratch start is the point. Uh, notch angle. What I meant here was like the bevel angle. Do I need the bevel? Uh, so for the quarter inch pieces here, uh, obviously this webbing is not quarter inch, this is a little bit less, but for this quarter inch uh, thickness here, um, yeah, I'm going to want to bevel it a bit. Um, they recommend beveling, so I'll do that. Uh, the tops are obviously going to be ground flat anyway, so um, at least I can do quick bevels, get that out of there. And yeah, and then I just need to make sure that I have the rods that I'm going to use and then um, write down the settings that I'm going to use for a quick reference. So, all right, let's get to it.